What's up, everybody, and welcome back to Fireside Rangers. I'm your host, Anthony Rivardo, joined by my co-host, Eric Wilson. And the New York Rangers are out of the postseason, and a lot of fans feel like there's one man to blame, probably more than anybody else, and that is the bread man, Artemi Panarin. What a disappointing end to his 2022-23 to season. I mean, Panarin just didn't show up in the postseason. That first round, abysmal outing from Artemi Panarin, Eric's favorite player. Maybe my favorite player. I think I lean Igor Shosurkin, but we all know the talents of Artemi Panarin. However, the talent just didn't show up in this postseason series. So now, going into this offseason, the Rangers very tight on cap space. What are they going to do with Artemi Panarin? Does he stay back another year? Does he get released? Does he get traded? I don't know. But we're going to go ahead and discuss about all the different options and uh, opportunities here for the New York Rangers regarding Artemi Panarin. But before we dive into all of that, please make sure to leave a like if you do enjoy this episode. Subscribe to the channel if you're new and ring the bell so you don't miss an episode. And comment your thoughts down below. Would love to interact with each and every single one of you. Without further ado... Eric, how are you doing today, my friend? And what are your thoughts on that postseason performance out of Artemi Panarin? I'm doing all right. You know, as, as every day goes by, I start to cope more and more with the fact that we have to wait until October to more watch more Rangers hockey. But it's kind of disappointing that we have to make this video. As you said, Panarin is my favorite player. I've loved him ever since the day he signed with us, July 1st, 2019. I'll never forget. Um, but... He's been playing great throughout his tenure with the Rangers in the regular season. It's just really when it comes down to the playoffs is where we kind of lose him right there. And honestly, despite coming really close to hitting 100 points almost every regular season he's been with us, it doesn't really mean much if he can't recreate that in the postseason. So, you know, I'd, I'd rather be making a video called like how Panarin earned the Hart Trophy or like won the Conn Smythe to lead the Rangers to a Stanley Cup. But instead, we got to figure out what to do with him. And honestly... I don't know. There's a couple of options out there. You know, the big one is trade him. You can buy out his contract or you can try to find someone else to like work well with him on a line in the playoffs. Because, you know, as we saw the people he was working with, not working too well. We brought in Patrick Kane almost specifically to have that chemistry with Panarin. They played like three games together, looked terrible and then split up. So with Patrick Kane pretty much like already packed his bags on out, like almost out the door. Um, there's a couple of options that we can break down here. Yeah, and listen, I think there is something to be said about Artemi Panarin failing to gel with any of the lines that he was on. There's got to be something to that. And I can't say that I think that it's the fault of the other players. I, I mean, maybe Panarin has just got a playing style that doesn't really fit in with what Gerard Gallant wants to do. Maybe it's just the fact that other players on the Rangers just don't gel well with that playing style. But we, we thought that he and Patrick Kane were just going to pick up where they left off from Chicago and, you know, instant sparks were going to fly and the Rangers were going to sail into the sunset. Never happened. They looked like crap together. They never played well. Yeah. Go ahead. I mean, no, like I fully agree. And this, like this season uh, playing alongside Trocek, I think, I think the two worked really well, but no matter who was over there on that right side, there was never a complete line of three offensive players that all worked well together. And I hate to say it, and Lord forgive me for saying it, but the like the best line I've seen Artemi Panarin play on with the Rangers was with Andrew Kopp and Ryan Strom. So <laughs> makes me really makes you wonder. <laughs> it does make you wonder. It's actually shocking that he even said one of those names because he said <laughs> the name that we do not say on this channel. But talking about Artemi Panarin, though, I do think that there again, there's something to be said about the fact that he's just not gelling with the team. Um, he gelled with those guys, but neither one of those guys are New York Rangers anymore. So. <laughs> What is there to do with Artemi Panarin? Um, and, and so, you know, taking a look at his season stats, he was the point leader in the regular season. 92 total points, 29 goals, 63 assists. He had his moments of excellence, brilliance. He had a four-point game at some point this year. Um, and in the playoffs, though, seven games, two assists, two points, zero goals. I mean, to have Artemi Panarin not score a single goal in that whole playoff series – was extremely disappointing. Last year, you take a look at it. He played in 75 games and 96 points last year in the postseason. 20 games, 16 points. Now he's 31 years old, coming off of this really disappointing season or postseason. Phenomenal regular season, but very, very disappointing postseason. He's still signed for three more years with an average annual value of $11.6 million. But is that average annual value worth it anymore? You know, if you we were looking at it with just the regular season in mind, we'd say probably... But you could also make an argument that, you know, the postseason means everything. And the fact that he couldn't gel in the postseason might be reason enough for the Rangers to want to move on from him at 31 years old. So, Eric, 
you know, let's talk about the trade option. Do you think that it is a strong contending option here? Because we've seen a lot of fans comment section, Twitter, they, they've been calling for a trade. A lot of fans have been calling for an Artemi Panarin trade. Personally, I'm pretty torn. I don't think I want to see him traded. I think I want to watch him bounce back next year. But what are your thoughts on the idea of the trade? And what do you think that the Rangers could potentially get in return? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm not a fan of the trade idea. Obviously, I'm extremely biased. I love Artemi Panarin, my favorite player. I have a poster of him on my wall. Um, but, like, outside of that, it's just it's one of those things that would be tough because if you're going to find a team that's willing to trade for Artemi Panarin, it's also going to have to be a team that's available to take on his $11.6 million contract. Like, for the NHL, that is an extremely large contract, and there's not many teams out there that, are one, have the cap space for it, or two, if they do have the cap space for it, want to – take all that on, which means that most likely the Rangers would have to retain like half of that salary to make it worth it for someone else. And like, sure, you could say if we were to trade Panarin, like a world-class superstar, the return we would get would be incredible. You know, I could like, I saw a comment on our previous video where they said trade Panarin for Eric Carlson, one for one, like who's probably going to win the Norris trophy this season. Then, you know, that would help the Rangers boost their defense too. But like, is San Jose willing to do that? Is that something the Rangers should even consider doing potential possible video idea <laughs> possibly but, but like i don't know it's like if it were to happen it would be like an incredible like once in a lifetime blockbuster trade for the new york rangers where we just ship off our best forward realistically for like a bunch of different like building pieces or another superstar so it'd be really tough to work out it would definitely shock the nhl world but that is one option i'm personally against it i know you said you are a little bit too you're a little torn on it but It'd be tough to make happen. If it did, I would be quite shocked. I would be shocked as well. And again, I'm, I'm against the trade, but I could see a scenario where the trade happens and everyone is all for it, you know, because Artemi Panarin being such a valuable player, again, maybe a little devalued because of this postseason. You know, it's probably around <laughs> the league. People are a little low on Artemi Panarin right now following that postseason exit. But overall, someone would be willing to give up the bag for him. They would be willing to trade a lot of pieces or at least some very valuable pieces for Panarin. So again, I'm against the trade, but if it happened, it might just shock me so much that I'd be thrilled about it. You know, it's possible, but I do want to talk about the other option, the main option, the one that I'm a proponent of, and that is Artemi Panarin coming back and hopefully having a bounce back season, giving him another chance to make that Stanley cup run, get into the postseason, and hopefully play better. I will say, I think that the part of this discussion, I think we're both for bringing him back, but the part of the discussion that we need to have is, how do we bring him back, but also get him to play better? You know, because even regular season, I know he was our leading point scorer. He had his moments of very bad inconsistency. Like he had some pretty bad games out there. He did fall flat and maybe cost the Rangers a couple of matches here during the regular season. And then obviously we know that the postseason he was a ghost. It was like not even having someone on the ice wearing the number 10. So I think what we need to discuss, you know, we want him back. But how do we bring him back and have him actually play up to the standards that we set out for him? You know, I mean, obviously, step one is keep him on that second line with Vincent Trocek. I think they had some nice chemistry there. The toughest part is going to be finding a right winger who gels well with them. And, you know, while he didn't score that many points during, like, the tail end of the postseason this year, when he was down on that third line with Heel and Kako, I think him and Kako paired together really well, kind of where Panarin's more of that, like, quick, crafty player who's always looking for the pass, um, I was very good at getting open and when like he doesn't take the shots when he needs to, but when he does take those shots, he has a very incredible shot. And Kako is the type of guy where he can pretty much carry the puck deep into the offensive zone all by himself and then just feed Panarin the puck. So I feel like the line of Panarin, um, Trocek and Kako would work out very well, especially with Patrick Kane most likely leaving, you know, someone's going to have to fill that role. We don't really have too much money to re-sign someone. So I think just finding a player already within the organization to like move into that right wing slot alongside Panarin will definitely help. And I think Kaka is definitely the best option there. Um, other than that, I think it's really just like a, a mental thing of like, you know, getting past this um, shout out our boy O3 for feeding me this quote from Panarin about how um, the last last year's postseason affected his play this postseason. He said, honestly, last playoffs, I turn over like every puck. This year, I don't do that. Not that bad. I don't want to say excuses like it's mental and I feel terrible in the playoffs. Every game I came in excited. I try again and again and again, and it didn't work. It didn't work. It didn't work. I don't know. So 
Yeah, and there was another quote that I saw from him where he mentioned how after the first or second game, he got a little rattled in his confidence, and he said that it snowballed. That's something specifically that Panarin said. It just snowballed. It got worse and worse, and it was all mental. It was just a, a utter lack of confidence. And I think that, you know, I mean, that's kind of – that's kind of tough. There's really no fix to that, right? Like you can bring in a new right winger who pairs well, real, pairs really well with Artemi Panarin. That does not fix his confidence per se. And I think that's kind of a tough thing here where, you know, if you are a proponent of the trade, you're going to say like, he's not a confident enough player to win a Stanley Cup. Let's trade him, right? That you could totally make that argument. But I do think that, you know, all the Panarin's done for the Rangers, how great of a player he is, how great he is in the regular season for sure. I mean, like I said, cost the Rangers a few games. He won the Rangers a few games, right? I mean, it's a team sport, but Artemi Panarin was definitely the catalyst to the Rangers. One of the catalysts for the Rangers getting into the postseason as the third seed and not as a wild card team. So I think, you know, we could, you could argue, take Panarin off this team. Are they a wild card team or are they the third seed? And I think you might say they're a wild card team. I don't know they, if they, they might not even make the playoffs. <laughs> right, right. Exactly right. And so I think that when you look at it from that perspective, Rangers fans, we have a lot to be said about taking the next step past the first round or past the ECF, getting to the Stanley Cup finals. But there is also a lot to be said about the fact that we are consistently getting to the playoffs mm -hmm. each year. And Artemi Panarin is a huge part of that. So let's not totally discount what he achieves in the regular yeah. season. And plus, you got to look at it with all the problems that we saw throughout this year's postseason. It, like, yeah, sure. From a point wise, it was 100 percent Panarin, the worst one. But there were a lot of problems overall throughout the entire top six core, really, where it looked like guys weren't really like trying as much as they should have. They didn't look like they wanted it. Patrick Kane came in and I hate to say it kind of messed up like the chemistry of the entire team where you have a superstar that big, everyone just wants to give him the puck, but he just keeps trying to pass it back to him where it wasn't really working out. And, you know, I'm no like psychologist. So, but like, just like my theory on like how this could turn into like a good thing. You look at last season where we weren't expected to make it very far. We made it all the way, like within two games of the finals, and then we lose. And like the kind of mindset there was like, this is what we're made of. Like, we're just go back in same mindset next year and we'll win. Maybe we just weren't really ready for a tougher year this season. But now that we've been just like heartbroken, defeated in the first round, now everyone's on that same level as Panarin where they're all feeling like bad about their play. And they're all going to be like willing to work harder and work towards like improving rather than just being like, and eh, we'll just get them next year, you know, but who knows? That's just my theory. Yeah, and again, no psychologist here, but again, <laughs> I, I just think like it's tough to find what's the fix to you know a player having um, you know a lack of confidence. It's really tough to fix that, and that really is on the player. I think Panarin's going to have to do a bit of soul searching this off season and really figure out um, how he can right the ship and get prepared for the two thousand and twenty three twenty four season. And again, once we roll back around to the postseason, if the Rangers are back in it, it it's kind of put up or shut up time for Panarin. Yeah, I, mean, I think I, I agree with that. You know, you had a bad year. Yeah, honestly, like last year, 16 points in 20 games. It's like, it's not terrible. It's just not Panarin caliber. So you can't really hate on him too much for this one bad off season. He had, like you would mentioned earlier, he's tenured for another three years. Give him another year or two. If he continues to disappoint, then that's when you look into a potential trade or buying out his contracts. It's, it's too early to tell. He's one of the best players we've had since we signed him. And we'd be foolish to let him go. I agree. I think that we're on the same ship here and Panarin, listen, for the faults that he had at times in the regular season and for the massive fault that was his postseason performance. I, I do think that there's still so much talent there. And, you know, to, to overreact to the postseason performance and discount what he did in the regular season, again, Rangers, maybe not even a playoff team. He was that good. Um, so I, I think that, you know, Let's not discount getting to the dance. Sure, he's not dancing well once he's in the dance, but he's getting the Rangers to the dance. So there's a lot to be said about his regular season performances and the value that that adds to this team across an 82-game season, especially considering he played all 82 games this year, a reliable player as well as a very talented one. So I don't know. Those are pretty much our thoughts on Artemi Panarin. We think that they should keep him, but we could see a we could see a scenario where a trade happens and maybe we feel good about it. But let us know your thoughts down below in the comment section. Again, if you enjoyed this episode, please make sure to leave us a like and subscribe to the channel. If you're new, ring the bell so you don't miss an episode. We will catch you all in the next one. Have a good one. And let's go Rangers.